G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, we're going to discuss every team in the AFL's most improved player this year. I'm going to go through, in descending order of the current ladder, and go through teams one by one and talk about who I think has improved the most for their club in season 2024. Let's get into it. So we're going to start with the Sydney Swans, and there's a number of good contenders here. I considered Brody Grundy's having an outstanding year. I considered even guys like Chad Warner has obviously improved this year. James Rowbottom probably also taken a step. Nick Blakey. But I think the most obvious candidate here is Isaac Rankin, and I'm going to double down on that. Because, yes, he has been a good player in the past and been an All-Australian quality forward. I think there's two elements to this. First of all, there's been a positional change. He's become a genuine midfielder. He also had a down year last year, but and further to that, you still got to give credit when a player becomes a, just a genuinely good player to becoming one of the best players in the competition. Number one for score involvement, 18th in the league for tackles. So he's obviously got a two-way element to his game. Not playing that much forward and still kicked 21 goals from 15 games this year. 26 disposals, been super consistent, regularly getting at least a goal, 20 possessions as well. Six and a half clearances a game. I think the clear answer here is Isaac Heaney is the most improved Sydney Swan. Moving on to Carlton, this one is probably going to be Tom De Koning. Now, a lot of De Koning's improvement and explosive improvement has happened more recently. If you look at the season in totality plus four hitouts, plus four disposals, and about five clearances a game. So that's genuinely good. But I think if you look at the last month with some recency bias, we've seen him explode, and that's why he makes this list. 23 disposals in the last four weeks, 27 hitouts on average, nine clearances, and he's kicked two goals in that period as well, and been a genuine match winner. I think Looms is this unexpected weapon that Carlton have. We already know they have good tools forward and back. We know they have a powerful midfield. Now they've got a really damaging Ruckman and that makes him a very scary proposition come the end of the year. So Tom DeConing makes this list for Carlton. Then we've got the Fremantle Dockers. Again, a few contenders. Jeremy Sharp comes over as a delisted free agent, you know, having a wonderful impact. Nat Fife as well, particularly early. Luke Jackson, particularly early. Jordan Clark across the whole season has been outstanding, but I'm going to highlight Josh Tracy here because they just look at the numbers and there's been a massive improvement. He kicked 15 goals from 13 games last year, so that's about a goal a game. He's about to turn 22. This year he's exploded with 30 goals, at least 14th in the Coleman from the top of my memory, up to nearly six marks a game as well. And you also factor in earlier in the season when there was, I think it was a Sean Darcy injury, he did a bit of second rucking as well. So you look at Fremantle stocks now, and I think his improvement has been enough to give Fremantle some comfort about their long-term key forward dynamic. And you know perhaps that's enough for them to not have that much interest in someone like a Logan McDonald. Let's talk about Essendon, a team that has genuinely improved this year, absolutely no doubt. Um, and I think if some of their improved players, I originally had Sam Durham in this spot. I would also include Archie Perkins. And I think Jake Stringer is adding a lot this year. Ben Mackay has also improved on the version of him that was in North Melbourne, particularly towards the end. But for me, again, a little bit of recency bias, but I think Jai Caldwell could be the answer here. In particular, in the last three weeks, we've seen increase the midfield time, and that has done wonders for his stats. So a couple of performances to highlight. 26 disposals, 11 tackles, 6 clearances, and a goal against West Coast. Then he backed that up with 32 disposals, 12 tackles, 12 clearances against Geelong. That's a triple-double. I think. We don't really use that term in the AFL, but technically a triple-double. So over the year, course of the year in totality, he's up three and a half disposals and up to seven tackles a game. So a very good two-way player there. Four and a half clearances. And when you consider over the course of the season, he only averages 39% attendances at the center bounce. Those are very healthy clearance numbers. So I think if he continues this development of playing more time at the coalface, we could see an increasingly improved Jai Caldwell. Then we got the Cats, and they have a number of genuine contenders here. Some of these guys are the most improved players in the league. I highlight Ryan Myers. He's taken his game to the next level. He was already really good last year. Tanner Braun has also improved. What Ollie Dempsey is doing for what I think was a late draftee, you know, whenever he was drafted, I think his year has been outstanding. But I think the clear answer here is Max Holmes. He's clearly one of their best players. We've seen in particular in, the, in recent times him spend a little bit more time in the midfield. In five of the last six games, that is true. He's second in the league for meters gained. His meters gain exploded from 360 to about 580 this year. We have seen him push behind the ball as a bit more of a playmaker from the defensive half. 25 disposals, 6 intercepts, 5 score involvements per game, and a very, very good shout to be All-Australian this year. Then we've got Collingwood, and this one was a little trickier. A few less candidates, in my opinion. I mean, when you've got an established team that's relatively old and experienced, there's not a whole heap of scope for improvement, and Collingwood has also not improved as a footy team this year. I did actually consider Dacos for this. I think his improvement has been stark. However, however, 
Darcy Cameron is probably the correct answer here in my opinion. About 16 disposals a game and 27 hitouts. He's averaging more clearances, more hitouts, more touches, and even intercepts have gone up, but also his ability to impact the game through contested marking has been a real feature. So I did think at the start of the year, their tall situation, and that included the rucks, wasn't very strong. Darcy Cameron has proved me wrong to some extent. Then we've got the power, and I think I'm gonna nominate Jason Horn Francis here. It may not be super obvious from the eye test because he was already pretty good last year, but you consider the output, right? 17 and a half disposals a game last year has become 22 and a half. And then you cross-reference that with how much time in the midfield is he getting? How much time on ground is he spending? And those numbers are pretty similar. So from about the same midfield exposure, from about the same minutes on the ground, we've seen a pretty good improvement from Horn Francis. He's averaging six and a half clearances a game up from 4.8 last year. His meters gained have gone up by about 100. So they're about 380 this year, which is very healthy for an inside mid. But 7.6 score involvements, so that would probably register as elite. It was only 5.1 last year and about four and a half inside 50s. So he's continuing pretty linear and steady improvement, but he's been a very, very good play this year and tracks to be one of the competition's best in however many years. Then we've got the Brisbane Lions. And again, we've, we've probably seen a fair bit of improvement from some young guys like Kai Lohman comes to mind. But the one I want to highlight here is Darcy Wilmot. Wilmot came third in the Rising Star last year. So he's been pretty good for a while now, but I do think there has been pretty good improvement this year as well. Apparently he hasn't missed a game since he debuted in a, an elimination final, I think against the Brisbane Lions. And what I like about Wilmot is he's got some flair with the ball in hand. He's a, a offensively minded, but he's also defensively minded. And his defensive acts and, and intent is also really solid, making him a very balanced halfback flanker. So 20 disposals a game, 77% efficiency, five marks, three and a half score involvements, and getting about 380 meters per game, which is plus 80 on last year. So maybe not outstanding improvement, but I think he's a very good player and worthy of some credit here. Then we've got the Western Bulldogs who have a, a number of young players that are about to pop. And one of the players many predicted would take that next step this year was Jamari Eugle Hagen, but it's been another key position forward who has taken my attention. Sam Darcy, he's had a, a fantastic year. 23 goals from 12 games would have been a genuine chance for the rising star this year had he not been rubbed out. But get this, Number one in the game for contested marks per game. I did not pick that. He's ahead of Harris Andrews and slightly ahead of Charlie Kerno too. There was a second and third. San Darcy is in some elite company there. 12 disposals a game, five marks, seven hit outs. You also give him credit for spending a bit more time, you know, in the ruck as well, but still kicking two goals a game. That's a really good season from Sam Darcy. Then we got the Giants, a few contenders here. Um, you know, Callum Brown came to mind. I think he started the year really well. Brent Daniels has also been fantastic. But, you know, if you look at the comparison to last year, both of those players were putting up similar numbers. So I've actually gone with Jesse Hogan, and you can make the same argument there because he kicked 49 goals last year and had a really particularly a strong end to the year, particularly good end to the year. 49 goals is great, but he's still improved. 36 goals from 15 this year. A genuine Coleman chance. I think he's had a quiet last month as the team has also faded a little bit. Seven goals from his last four games, but fourth in the league for contested marks. Number one player for marks inside 50 in the competition. Yes, we did see this towards the back end of last year, but I would still give him credit as possibly being their most improved player this year. Let's go with the Gold Coast Suns. Another few good nominations here. The two that came to mind were Raul and Flanders. If you look at it, they were doing a lot of this stuff last year. Raul in particular started this year absolutely unreal um, and has dropped back a little bit. And that's fine. It's just put him in line a little bit with last year's output. However, the player that I think is the most improved for the Gold Coast Suns is probably Mac Andrew. So, he was drafted to this 200 centimeter ruckman uh, that has now developed into a intercepting key back who also wins a bit of the footy and uses the ball well as well. So he's about plus five in disposals. That's up to a healthy 16 and had a couple of games of 22, 25. Like those are really good numbers. 317 meters game, but also elite for intercepts, eight intercepts per game. That is an absolutely outstanding season, seven marks per game, and uses the ball just under 80% disposal efficiency. So I think as far as comparing what he was as a player to what he is now, I think he's the most improved Gold Coast son. For Melbourne, there wasn't as much of an obvious candidate here. I actually found this a little tricky. Again, a mature team. You know, we've seen a little bit from Alex Neil Ball, and I think he has lifted his game, uh, but more so towards the start of the season from memory. Trent Rivers 
is an outstanding player, but he also was last year. So by definition, I've gone with Blake Howes. He was a player who hadn't debuted until this year, debuted in opening round, played 12 games, and averaging about 13 disposals, five marks a game, uses the ball well at 80% as well, as well as five intercepts per game. So become you know a pretty good, reliable player in that back line, drafted as a wingman a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken. So he probably ticks the box as most improved in what is admittedly a pretty mature side. Then we've got the Hawthorne Footy Club, and they are a team that has exploded as a team in terms of improvement and playing really good team football. Picking out and isolating one single improved player is not obvious. I think a lot of them have improved. But if you had to isolate a player that has improved explosively, that would probably be Lloyd Meek. I also do consider Sam Frost, who I think has had a good year, Massimo D'Ambrosio as well. However, Lloyd Meek has just turned 26 and done a long apprenticeship as a you know young ruckman at both Fremantle and now Hawthorne. From 16 games last year, he averaged less than 10 disposals, 18 hitouts, and two clearances. That has now become 14 disposals a game, so plus four and a half. His hitouts have doubled to 34.4, and he's winning three and a half clearances a game. Now, off the top of my head, I'm not too sure how much of that is due to being second ruck in some games last year, but 34.4 hitouts. Puts him in pretty elite company. He's having an outstanding season. In my opinion, he is the most improved Hawthorne player. Now we're up to the Adelaide Crows, and I originally put down Jake Saligo for this, but then I changed my mind. I think the answer is Isaac Rankin. Isaac Rankin was already a good player last year as a forward. Now he is both a forward and an impact midfielder. So to back up that claim with some stats, he only attended 2% of centre bounces for the entire year last year. That is now up to 40%. He's winning more of the footies, up to 19 disposals, which I think is about three more than last year, winning four clearances a game, and he's kicking more goals per game. So he's averaging two goals per game as it currently stands. Again, the stats uplift probably doesn't reflect how much I think he has improved and added to his game this year and become Adelaide's potentially their best player. Nearly 400 meters gained as well. I must admit, you know, we, we probably saw this coming to some extent if you watched him as a junior and he was highlighted as this next big thing. I must admit, I probably didn't expect him to have that same impact in the midfield at AFL level given his size, but he's proven me wrong. I always knew he was a good forward, don't get me wrong. But him adding this midfield craft to his game makes him a seriously dangerous player. We'll move on to St Kilda, and I did consider Wanganin and Miller are here, and Darcy Wilson probably doesn't qualify being a first-year player. However, I think when you consider the uplift in production, it's got to be Riley Bonner, who's become a best 22 player, sort of as a halfback wingman for St Kilda after being delisted by Port Adelaide. He's averaging more possessions than he ever has with 22. I think last year he averaged about 13 touches a game with Port Adelaide. 17 and a half kicks and four and a half handballs, so that's about a 17 to four ratio of kicking to handballs. And that's more impressive when you consider his efficiency is 77%. That's really good going. His meter gained is 501 per game, and he's averaging four rebound 50s a game too. So he's come in and become a really good player for St. Kilda. Can be error prone for sure, but I think if you're giving credit for guys improving on what they previously were, Riley Bonner is pick of the bunch for St. Kilda. For the West Coast Eagles, again, another player that could lay claim to being the most improved player in the competition this year, considering where he's come from, Jake Waterman. Now, Waterman has never kicked more than 18 goals in a season before. He's currently sitting on 37 from 13 games, and I think that's third in the Coleman despite missing several games through injury, or at least two. So he's still the Coleman chance, and he's second in the league for marks inside 50, seventh in contested marks. For an undersized key forward, that's impressive as well. He's only about 192 centimeters. This becomes all the more impressive when you factor in he nearly retired at the end of last year because of a horrible illness that he caught. His career was threatened. He lost 10 kilos. He's come back and been one of the Best forwards in the competition, no doubt. Jake Waterman, no doubt about it, is the most improved eagle. For the Richmond Footy Club, it's been a bit of a, a, a dire year from the injury front, and as such, the results haven't followed. So picking the most improved player was a little bit tricky when things haven't gone their way. I considered Ben Miller. He's had an outstanding year, but I did want to highlight Tom Brown, who was a first-round draft pick a couple of years ago. You know, he's had to do a fairly long apprenticeship in the VFL. I think he's played about 26 games in the VFL before earning his spot. I think there was also an injury last year in 2023. So he's about a third-year player. But the way he reads the play, his composure, his ball use as well, I think has been a real bright spark for Richmond. Averaging about 13 disposals and 260 meters gained. A little bit up and down statistically being a young player, but there's been a couple of outstanding performances. I thought he was really good against Fremantle and against St Kilda as well. 18 touches, 10 contested possessions, 354 meters gained. That was his fourth game at AFL level. I think he's probably been one of the success stories for Richmond this year. Then we've got North Melbourne, who as a young side, have a number of players who qualify for this. 
So I'll mention the guys that I didn't pick, first of all. George Wardlaw, um, pretty good first year, very good second year so far. Charlie Combin has been outstanding as a convert to being a key position defender. Jackson Archer has done a wonderful job um, you know, negating small forwards as well. Those guys would have all been worthy nominations, good players. Tristan Cherry has to be the most improved North Melbourne player, in my opinion. He only played nine games last year. I think it was a bit injury affected and was promising, but ultimately Goldstein as well was the number one ruck there. But now, now that he's been given the mantle of number one ruck at North Melbourne, he's had a fantastic year. 16 disposals a game, 32 hitouts from a guy people probably didn't expect a lot from this year, respectfully, outside of North Melbourne, that is. He's doubled his clearances from three to 6.3. And get this, he's also a top five tackler in the game and top six in hitouts. And I have it burned in my memory that great rundown chase he did on Liam Ryan against West Coast. It shows his defensive attitude. Again, Lay's claim to be one of the more improved players in the competition this year. And they've definitely had a real success story this year with Tristan Cherry. If I'm not mistaken, it wasn't that long ago, Cherry was talked about as a potential trade to the St Kilda because things weren't working out at North Melbourne. He's been fantastic this year. But there you have it, guys. That is every team's most improved player in the AFL this season. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. If you got through this far in the video and you didn't hate it, I'd love it if you like the video and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.